Hi everyone! Today I want to show you a very special model that I built for the Technic uh, Challenge 29, which is, which is a contest held at Eurobricks forums. And the rules stated that we have to build a tracked vehicle. So I was like thinking, what kind of vehicle should I make? I wanted to make a representation of a real thing, something iconic. And I was browsing the internet, uh, should I make a some kind of a Lamborghini, a Countach, or what, some modern car, a SUV. And well, I realized that I have lots of grey panels, especially the wheel arches left. So the idea came that why not make a tracked grey vehicle and it turned out to be a DeLorean because I love building vehicles that have track instead of wheels. Ever since I saw the 4206 Extreme Adventure from 2017, which was designed by Milan and Rydl, I really like this type of mix-ups uh, when you put tracks on regular cars. I think it just looks awesome. So that's how the idea was born. And as soon as I uh, basically got the idea, I found and downloaded a 3D reference model. And as you can see, I cut the door off in Blender scaled it down 12 times and imported it in LEGO Digital Designer and I used that as my template, a reference so that my representation of the model is as accurate as possible with a big difference of course is that it has freaking tracks for the wheels and of course I had to slightly cut the wheel arches in order to fit them but other than that it is very true to the original so it has opening galvic doors there is a steering wheel which is connected to the steering system yeah of course the model is motorized so not only the steering but also we have four track drive so each of the tracks is driven by a different motor so the front two tracks are driven by the motor here which is driving the front differential the rear tracks are driven by the second motor driving the rear tracks I'm using Power Functions L motors because they are much more compact than any other solution and I really wanted a nice compact solution for the interior because I was aiming for the seats to be as accurate as possible so you can even see in the reference how accurate they are they are nice and big and the motors represent the, basically the console and they aren't sticking too far or anything so I'm really happy with that so two power functions motors for driving one powered up L motor which is right here on the top of console for the steering for the steering system and the steering wheel and also worth mentioning is that I'm using two of the new four studded links here in the front for the steering system the steering angle isn't really sounding super high it's around 20 degrees but that's too because of the limitations of the CV joints because not only do I have to uh, I carry the torque and the steering angle but also the suspension angle so before we go to suspension one thing worth mentioning is that of course there is a, a fake 6 V6 engine here in the back and it is driven by the rear motor the rear motor drives a differential and then another 20 tooth gear then a 16 tooth gear another 16 and then an 8 tooth gear the whole V6 engine is slightly lowered by half a stud in order to fit uh, uh, here on the rear, under the under the rear hatches with uh, these covers. So, driving, steering, fake engine, opening doors, working steering wheel. That's not all. We also have suspension, and not just one type of suspension, but two types of suspension. First suspension is the classic independent suspension. So uh, I'm using four hard shock absorbers. The difference between the front and the rear shock absorbers are that the front ones uh, have to support lower weight than in the rear for the rear the rear shock absorbers uh, have the suspension geometry has been designed so that they are uh, pre um, pre-tension so they are already compressed when the suspension is at the lowest point and i use a similar system as in the 42160 audi so basically the suspension point has been moved out a bit more and the suspension angle has been limited so that the rear suspension is under slight pretension when it's uh, when the wheels are already raised above ground and because we have to deal with a larger weight in the rear now the weight is larger in the rear not only because just of the 
way the car is designed, but also because the seats, most of the drive motors, fake engine, and of course the Buoy 3.0 which is powering the whole model, it's all placed in the rear. You can even see how close the Buoy is to the rear bumper. And uh, I actually like the way it came out because not only it allows me easier charging here on the top, but it also allows me for the lights. So I set both ports to shine in the maximum power as possible, white, and they shine through the red light here. And it's a really nice effect. It's not very noticeable uh, when you're outside, but inside it, it gives a nice effect. So. That's about the exterior and functionality. And yeah, I can't forget one more thing. I also mentioned there is a second type of suspension and that's on the tracks. So instead of making the entire track rotate, which would require uh, turntables and make the tracks much wider, I decided, uh, this is the first time I used this solution, uh, that the entire lower beam is the one that gets, uh, that can angle up just a few degrees up and down. So instead of rotating the entire track, the lower beam here can uh, tilt a few degrees and it's not much, but it's enough to overcome small, let's say, 5mm tall obstacles and it gives another uh, range of motion, more flexibility when you're driving outside. And talk about driving outside, I'm going to show you how well it performs outside. Uh, seen uh, it can perform quite well outside obviously it's not a rock crawler I didn't even bother putting any rubber uh, rubber inserts on the tracks because the power that the CV joints can take is limited so I rather have tracks slip than overload the CV joints and especially the front ones which have to carry the uh, power at an angle not just the steering angle which is around 20 degrees but also the suspension angle, which is also around, I don't know, 15-20 degrees. So that's a lot of angle for those for normal, not reinforced joints to take. So regarding that, uh, I think it performs really well outside. It can drive over uh, quite rough terrain and there have been no issues. Um, the steering radius is a bit large, but you have to realize that if there are tracks, even if I could increase the steering angle, uh, it's a limited space they have before touching the bodywork, so I think it's a good compromise and when it comes to exterior, to the aesthetics, I don't think uh, there are many compromises. I am really, really, really happy how it turned out. Of course, I'm keeping this model assembled and uh, the way I managed to use a 3D reference to get really accurate shaping the way I managed to assemble the 1445 parts together into this one to twelve scale model, I, yeah, I'm just, I'm just really happy with it. And uh, I dare, would dare to say it's even more accurate in some regards than the, than the Lego's uh, one to twelve scale uh, Defender from the Time Machine, because unlike Lego's one, mine actually tapers in the front and in the rear. Lego's one is just straight and flat and uh, I don't know I just I just think that building at this scale 1 to 12 allows you to to make a, to have a really good uh, exterior you can cram a lot of functionality and you don't have to build 1 to 8 1 to 10 scale to have everything you need with uh, thanks to the modern parts you can actually keep the, the parts uh, part count and the model small compact and robust, 
So I think one to plus curve is currently the sweet spot. And uh, yeah, I'm really glad how it came out. I hope it does well that also others will like it uh, at the contest. And uh, if you like it too, then please remember to like, share and subscribe. Thank you very much and I wish you a nice day. Bye bye.